So I wanna talk about the atmosphere of Mars. Um, we've examined the composition of Mars's atmosphere in the past, and we know that it's mostly CO2, just like on Venus. Um, its clouds are also made of frozen CO2, um, but there are some clouds made of water um, vapor and also dust. So the atmosphere of Mars is fairly thin, but it does carry clouds and it does support winds across its surface. The winds can be very fast um, and easily carry dust high above the surface, um, but the thin atmosphere means that those winds are not very forceful. Um, also, it seems like the, the, the dust that is transported on Mars seems not to significantly affect its sand dunes. So it doesn't change sand dunes quickly over time. Um, this is something that this link goes to a NASA source that talks more about that. Um, so that's either because of the thin atmosphere or because that dust is carried higher in the atmosphere than the sand dunes lie, or maybe both. Um, there are global dust storms that seem to recur on Mars in a three-year cycle. When we look at the surface of Mars, um, we don't see small craters on Mars, similarly to what we saw on Venus. In the case of Mars, why do you suppose that is? Okay, yeah, exactly. So I'm seeing the most votes for one. Yep, the small craters are eroded away by some of the dust transported in Martian winds. So even though it doesn't change the sand dunes under short time scales, under long time scales, this wind erosion does play a significant factor. Um, of course, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be burned up in the dense Martian atmosphere because the atmosphere is not dense. Um, these craters are called the Arima twins and I think it looks like a little smiley face. All right, so when we look at the um, evolution of the atmosphere of Mars, uh, the primary atmospheres and secondary atmospheres are again the same as Venus and Earth, but after that the atmospheres evolve differently because of Mars's mass and its temperature. So when we look at the escape velocity of Mars and compare it to the average speeds, we'll figure out what happened to all of the gases in its atmosphere. So its escape velocity based on its mass is about five kilometers per second. This is about half of Earth's escape velocity. So here are the average speeds at the surface temperature of Mars um, of water, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, and some noble gases. So which of these would you expect to have escaped off of the surface of Mars over the course of its entire history? All right. So yeah, I'm seeing the most votes for five that none of those are going to escape. Um, remember to, to figure it out, we'd want to use our rule of six. So our rule of thumb is we take the six times the average velocity. And if that is bigger than the escape velocity, then these gases will escape. But six times 0.59 is, what is it? Something like three and a half. And so that is smaller than the escape velocity. All these other gases are slower than 0.59 kilometers per second. So that means that none of these would be expected to escape off the surface of Mars. So Mars was not expected to lose its atmosphere just because of its low gravity, even though it is a fairly small mass planet compared to Earth and Venus. So some questions for you. Um, the evolution of water in the atmosphere of these planets is particularly important because as we've seen, it plays a crucial role in the climate systems of the planets and it's also part of why planets do or don't have plate tectonics. So question for you, what happened to the water in Venus's and Earth's secondary atmosphere? All right, so of course we know that Earth's water became a liquid and condensed into our oceans. And Venus's water, you know, initially maybe it evaporated off the surface, um, but ultimately it dissociated. So what do we mean by dissociated? it was split by UV radiation into a free hydrogen atom plus a hydroxide ion. And the hydrogen was able to then escape Venus. So once broken, it, the water could not be put back together again and Venus lost its water. Um, why did this happen? Well, because the surface temperature on Venus is 
you know, more than twice what it is on Earth. Earth and Mars, however, are more similar in surface temperature. Mars is cooler, being farther from the sun, um, but the Earth and Mars have fairly similar um, temperatures, and so you might expect their atmospheric evolution to run a similar course as well. So let's investigate this. Um, on Mars, the water froze, but also became a liquid. So similar to Earth, it was able to condense. It was not so hot that it was unable to condense um, like Venus was. So on Venus, too hot to condense, did not um, form vast oceans as far as we know. So on Mars, most of it is frozen, but also liquid. And we can see the evidence of all of this ancient water on different surface features. So one example is we see a, a type of stone called mudstone. And this is a stone that on Earth um, forms under lake beds. And so Curiosity, the rover from NASA, found these rock formations that look like those on Earth. And it looks like the signs of a giant lake bed. Um, we also see similar rocks well, other types of rocks that also form by water called conglomerates. So these are more like the types of rock that would form um, under flowing rivers. Um, these are small rocks that have been pressed together into mud to form a solid rock over time. And you can see the sample from Mars and the sample from Earth of these conglomerate materials are remarkably similar. One third evidence of liquid water on Mars's ancient surface is there are what we think might be uh, water flows. So on the left here, these are runoff channels. Um, it might be a little hard to see in the black and white image, but it's like here, it looks like there's a meandering river-like feature and that then um, broadens into many branches, just like a river delta does on earth. So all of these branches um, seem to suggest a flowing river in the past. Um, on the right here, these are also outflow channels, so channels carved by flowing water. Okay, finally, we can see direct evidence in the form of clay, clay minerals, which are also formed in the presence of water. Um, and there are some water erosion patterns that are being investigated by NASA's Perseverance rover in the Jezero crater. Um, this image on the left is an artist's rendering to be very clear, um, but the Jezero crater might have once been filled with water uh, and then basically burst open the side, so eroded um, and had outflow channels leading out of the crater and then eroding the surrounding region. So because this is a potentially water formed feature, that's why the Perseverance rover wants to investigate it. There are other similar regions that Perseverance could have landed in, um, but didn't. Um, Curiosity was almost going to land in this crater called the Miyamoto crater. As you can see, it looks like half of the entire crater's surface has been eroded, um, but it's possible that it's also experienced a lava flow since that time. So it's unclear the provenance of some of these features, and um, that's exactly why. NASA likes to send rovers to try to, uh, um, I guess, unravel the history of some of these areas. Um, questions about some of this evidence of ancient liquid water on Mars' surface? Okay. So there is no evidence for liquid water persisting on the surface of Mars today. Um, it cannot persist on the surface of Mars because the temperature and pressure doesn't allow for water in its liquid phase on its surface. It's too cold. So if water is on its surface, it tends to freeze. And if the water is in the atmosphere, it's also in the form of um, clouds. So no liquid water on the surface of Mars today. Uh, but we do see frozen water. So Mars has two large polar caps. The north polar cap is the largest one and it has a permanent, what they call residual component made of water ice. 
It also grows seasonally. So as you can see here, there's um, October 1996. This is the North Polar Cap at its maximum extent. Um, it shrinks seasonally. So here it is in January. And then in March, there's a fairly small component left over. This is exactly what our polar ice caps do as well. They shrink and grow seasonally as precipitation from snow adds to them. It's a little bit different on Mars. Um, the water freezes out of the atmosphere directly going from the gaseous phase to the solid phase. Um, and CO2 ice also grows in the same way, going from gaseous phase to solid phase, and then from solid to gas. So the, these processes are called sublimation. That's when it goes from solid to gas and deposition from gas to solid. Um, so sublimation, if you've ever had a chunk of dry ice, you've seen it before. The dry ice just goes from solid to gas and it never melts into a liquid. Okay, um, there's also a southern polar ice cap that is made, I think, almost entirely of carbon dioxide ice. But I don't have a picture of that one for you. All right, other evidence of frozen water on Mars' surface is, um, well, it's, it's in the soil. So um, we have dug with the, I think this was the Curiosity rubber. Um, and found a white substance underneath the surface. And the, um, the speed at which dry ice, carbon dioxide ice sublimates versus how fast water ice sublimates can tell you which one it is. And so by watching how this sublimated over time, um, they were able to figure out that this was water ice, not dry ice. All right. So even though there's not standing liquid water on the surface, there's some evidence that liquid water may emerge as part of seasonal changes. Um, this evidence is not incontrovertible, but this is the wall of the um, Gami crater where there are um, seasonal changes that appear to create water channels, these dark regions. Um, it's not totally known whether this is liquid water that is melting under the surface and then causing a flow. It might also be CO2 that is sublimating and triggering a landslide. So either of those are possible. Um, so to investigate that, you'd want to test the composition in those regions. And that's exactly uh, what orbiters are trying to do using radar signals. Um, I don't know that they've nailed down in the Gami crater whether there's evidence of water in that area, but we do see evidence of underground liquid water in various regions under the South Pole of Mars. So liquid water cannot exist on the surface, but subsurface it is possible. Um, what questions do you have about the evidence for liquid and ice on Mars? All right, so I wanna jump back to what happened to the rest of the components of Mars's atmosphere. So we've seen that the water um, both condensed into a liquid and then ultimately now it's frozen on the surface of Mars. Um, the carbon dioxide, it didn't escape, right? Because none of those gases that I showed you were going to escape. So the carbon dioxide survived and became the main component of the atmosphere since the water was frozen out. Um, the sulfur dioxide, there's more of an interesting story. So remember back to Venus and Earth, what happened to the sulfur dioxide in those planets? All right, I see most votes for one, which is exactly right. So on Venus, that sulfur dioxide combined with water to form sulfuric acid, and that is what comprises most of Venus's clouds. On Earth, that sulfur dioxide absorbed into its oceans. So on Mars, the sulfur dioxide also combines with water to form acid rain. And we can see the evidence for this 
in the composition of the rocks under Mars's surface. So because acid rain would have fallen on the surface of Mars, it causes the surface to be more acidic than deeper regions of the soil. And so for that region, for that reason, sorry, the crust of Mars is kind of layered with um, materials formed in the uh, presence of acid farther up and then um, less acid rich, more basic minerals uh, farther beneath the surface. So that sulfur dioxide, what happened to it? It was absorbed into clay through the sulfuric acid. Um, because of this, it no longer is a major component of Mars's atmosphere. And so it's basically trace. Okay. Um, the acid rain happens on Venus too. So it has those sulfuric acid clouds. Those do rain, um, but the, those raindrops evaporate before they reach the ground. So for that reason, the sulfur dioxide doesn't have a pathway out of Venus's atmosphere. And so it stays in Venus's atmosphere over time. All right, the nitrogen on Mars, it doesn't really react chemically with other things like the sulfur dioxide, CO2 or water would. So it just survived, it did not escape, doesn't react, therefore it just sticks around. And the noble gases, same story. They don't react chemically with other things. So they persisted. So then looking at the current atmosphere of Mars, of course, mostly CO2, which we already knew, um, but now you know what happened to the water and what happened to the sulfur dioxide. 